in the year 1661, King Charles II received a gift from the famous architect Sir Christopher Wren. Eventually, this led to the discovery of the cell. But what was this special gift? And how did it ultimately lead to such an important discovery? The gift was a sketch of three things. A louse, a flea, and the wing of a fly. Might not seem like much today, but back then, these drawings were a big deal. Especially because it was at that time that microscopes were just invented. And people were really excited to see magnified images of pretty much anything. So coming back to the story, King Charles was so impressed with these images that he immediately ordered Wren to make more. When Wren refused, the job was assigned to Robert Hooke. So Robert Hooke got to work and began observing insects just like Wren. But one day, without realizing that he was about to change the field of biology forever, he decided to look at a thin piece of cork under the microscope. He saw millions of box-like structures. These reminded him of the praying and resting rooms of monks in old monasteries. These rooms were called cellars. Since the slice of cork also had many empty structures surrounded by walls, he named them cells. And just like that, the cell was discovered. Hook published all his findings in a book called Micrographia. The book became a bestseller, but it did something even more important. It encouraged people to develop more advanced microscopes. Over the next 200 years, countless biologists observed all sorts of things under the microscope. Among them were Schleiden and Schwann. While Schleiden, a botanist, observed samples of plant tissue, Schwann, a zoologist, observed samples of animal tissue. Schleiden concluded that all plant tissues are made of cells. And Schwann concluded that all animal tissues are made of cells. They got together, combined their ideas, and gave birth to what we now call the cell theory. This theory states two things. One, that cells are the building blocks of living organisms. That is, all living organisms are made of one or more cells. And two, all living organisms are composed of cells. And a cell is the basic structural and functional unit. Let's try to understand this second statement. Take a look at the structure of this wall. It is made up of many units of bricks. In the exact same way, the structure of an entire animal or a plant is made up of many units of cells. This is why the cell is called the structural unit of living organisms. Now, when the bricks come together to form a wall, the wall is then able to serve a purpose or have a function. For instance, a wall that forms a dam has the function of holding back water. In a similar way, cells come together to form tissues which have specific functions. So heart cells, for example, come together to help the heart pump blood to the rest of the body. And this is why the cell is also called a functional unit. Even though Schleiden and Schwann came together to formulate the cell theory, they disagreed on one point. Schleiden, like many other scientists who lived during that period, believed that cells formed spontaneously or basically out of nothing. Schwann didn't really think this was true. Turned out that Schleiden was in fact wrong. Because soon after, the German physician Rudolf Virchow proved that all cells came from pre-existing cells, which simply means that new cells were formed from old cells, and they didn't just form out of nothing. And this became the third statement in the cell theory. Hope you now understand how the cell was discovered and how it forms the basis of all life on Earth. 
Let's recap what we've learned in this video. With the help of a primitive microscope, Robert Hooke discovered cells in cork tissue. 200 years later, Schleiden, Schwann, and Virchow proposed the cell theory, which states that all living things are made of cells. The cell is the basic structural and functional unit of life. And all cells come from pre-existing cells. Sometime between the discovery of cells and the cell theory, another very important discovery about cells was made by a Scottish botanist called Robert Brown. Keep watching to find out what this was. And I'll see you soon.